Hey, how's it going? This week we are doing something a little bit different. One thing that has bothered me since we are about 20 episodes in now into the solo runs are my first two runs. Clefairy and Slowpoke were done at a time where I was pretty much a total noob and I didn't understand the game as well as I do now. I also had an awful speed up system on the emulator I was using and that made my times look way worse than they should have been. So today I want to be thorough and I want to give those runs an update but I didn't want to do two new videos so I'm going to do a versus style video that flips back and forth between the two runs. I'll be trying out a format where I have a chart for the various milestones of a run and we'll compare and contrast those various times as they make it to them. I'm not going to do the usual stat deep dive here because this video is going to be a very long one. There's nothing really remarkable stat wise for these Pokemon outside of Slowpoke having the privilege of being the 151st ranked Pokemon in terms of speed. Now both of these Pokemon are pretty great for these types of runs and have several similarities. They have excellent excellent move sets that both include Psychic and Ice Beam and they both have a badge boosting move but the main difference is that Slowpoke is probably a combination of the two best typings in the game. Psychic also gets stabbed and it has access to the very powerful Amnesia while Clefairy has access to only Defense Curl and what in my opinion is the best coverage move in the form of Thunderbolt. They are Pokemon that are late game monsters and really start to come into their own about halfway through the game and they have high potential to be very high up on the tier list when this video is done with. Now if you are interested in the rules of the run, I have pasted them down in the description to save a little bit of time so you can go down there and you can look at that if you're interested in how my no items solo runs work for these videos. But before I continue, I'd like to quickly say that if you enjoy these types of videos, I've done them for about the past half year or so, so consider subscribing if that is of interest to you. More importantly, likes, dislikes, and comments of any kind help out that dreaded YouTube algorithm the most and if you are someone who just doesn't normally interact or have anything to say just scroll down and type in pink boys below and that'll help out the channel a lot now with that said go grab yourself a soda pop maybe a little snacky and just strap in because this is a little bit of a longer video than the last several videos so I hope you enjoy it and let's just get to it Like with all my runs, I do reset on both Pokemon to get decent DVs, and we're going to start off with Clefairy. I do this because if you watch the original Clefairy video, you know that Brock is a struggle, like with a lot of Pokemon who only start with normal moves. While Clefairy isn't as poor as Psyduck in the fact that it only has access to Scratch until level 28 or Rhyhorn that was in a similar situation, Pound is just a bad move. It's Scratch levels of bad, keep that in mind. Clefairy does have an advantage in the fact that it does learn Growl, and that not only lowers the attack but it allows us to avoid bide damage, a luxury that I did not have in my last two runs. It's also worth noting that Clefairy learns Sing, but in yet another strange Generation 1 design choice, Brock has not one, not two, not even three full heals, but five of them for each Pokemon. Now that's funny because if you are playing the game normally, as intended, the Pokemon that you have access to wouldn't even have status conditions for him to utilize it on, and most gym leaders don't even have things to heal status moves, so it's just weird. Anyway, I've been playing the various trainers and some grinding in the background, but let's get into the big problem that Clefairy has to overcome by just looking at a Brock fight at level 13. While growling down the Geodude does make his tackles do minimal damage, and chipping away with Pound works just fine, the issue that arises is that you just don't have enough PP to go the distance with Pound, a problem that I can relate to. You can avoid all the bots in the world, but when you start using Struggle and you're taking self-inflicted damage, this fight becomes borderline impossible unless you are doing something silly like using save states to get perfect outcomes. Who would do that? I do try at various levels just in case I was initially wrong in my first video, but the reality here is that you do need to get to level 28 for double slap. So after grinding up, up, it's time to face Brock once again, and this fight initially doesn't look great. I can't stress enough how awful Pound is, and although it's not a hard fight, doing so little damage and taking constant chip damage over and over means that I wind up getting pretty low before I even get to the Onyx. I actually go all the way down to 5 HP, but I was blessed by the Moon Gods today, and being extremely persistent with Sing, I make him waste all of his obnoxious and out of place 5 full heals, and then I get Sleep to finally stick, and then I start chipping him down and that gets me past. It's worth noting how much superior Double Slap is because while it does one damage in this scenario just like Pound would do, it's a multi-turn move meaning that if I get a 5 proc on it, I'll do 5 times the damage of Pound. And that's the Brock fight out of the way. 
It was a slog, and it's not a great start for Clefairy, and our first timestamp in the video is 1 hour and 24 minutes. It's not great, but I am optimistic our little moon boy can bring this one back to have a respectable time. Now let's shift over to Slowpoke just to show the extreme contrast to Clefairy. Obviously the main problem with Slowpoke is that it's very slow, but it being a combination of the two best types in the game, and starting off the game with a special attack and confusion, gives it a clear advantage in the first leg of this marathon race. Race. I don't do a whole lot of time wasting here. I don't battle everybody. I do battle the three bug catchers in Viridian without much issue and I reach level 8 which is a fairly low level to attempt Brock at and is usually reserved for the elite level Pokemon but I just go ahead and I give it a shot anyway. And what we end up getting here is a demolition of Brock. Slowpoke barely breaks a sweat as Confusion just slices through both of his Pokemon. I only take 6 points of damage in the process. It's just very easy and it definitely surprised me because I expected some extra grinding due to the slow speed, but here we are, and I'll take it. So this leaves us with a 14 minute post Brock time, which is fantastic and very surprising. We are already well over an hour ahead of the competition, so this one should just already be in the bag, right? Well, let's not think about that just yet, and instead we'll continue on with Slowpoke since we are a lot ahead. The path to and in Mount Moon isn't too interesting. I do get access to Water Gun, which is a temporary way to bolster our single move situation and since I beat Brock so quick, I do pick up several optional trainers to help our very low level so that Rival 2 isn't impossible to do. Making it through that, this leads us to our second timestamp of the video that is 41 minutes right before Rival number 2, and this fight does not go well. The Pidgeotto is an absolute menace. The first attempt, it just sand attacks me a lot and chips me down to the point that I'm just hobbling by the time I make it to the end of the fight, I lose. The second attempt, Pidgeotto just straight up solos me on its own and that just feels great. Third attempt starts off with some sand attacks and I'll just keep it real with you guys I rage quit I uh, just quit out of the game and I don't have time for sand it's coarse and you know the line from that movie the fourth attempt ends up being the charm here I still get crit by Pidgeotto and I'm in an uphill battle from the very start I managed to weave my way through the fight and the only reason I'm able to get through this fight is because of bad AI move selection leech seed into a growl allows me to get off the confusions needed to get past this one and this fight was definitely the antithesis of the easy Brock fight but I'm glad to be moving on the path to bills is unavailable eventful, but the one key thing that Slowpoke needs here in this section was hitting level 22 to get access to Headbutt. And now that leads us to Misty, I save at 57 minutes right in front of her, and this is a very easy fight. Headbutt allows us to do some heavy neutral damage to her stars as they only can trade damage back with tackles. Her good AI will not allow her to use water moves just like with a Psyduck video. Overall it's over very quickly, and that's two badges down for our slow and steady boy. Picking back up at the SSN, I pick up Body Slam immediately and I do battle the gentleman with the easy fire type Pokemon so I can get that optional rare candy before our next timestamp. One hour and eight minutes is the time before rival number three and we are in the catbird seat for this race but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves let's see how this battle goes. The first attempt is not that great. Some minor differences with Pidgeotto means the end of this fight with Ivysaur is a little too close and some vine whips just seal the deal. The second attempt I avoid lots of chip damage and annoyances very early meaning that I'm much more healthy going into the Ivysaur and confusions are able to get the job done. I'm annoyed that the rival fights haven't been easy, but at the moment I'm not too concerned and two attempts is not that bad. I finish up and I make it to Lieutenant Surge mere minutes after that with a time of 1 hour and 12 minutes. This fight is how you have come to expect. It all hinges on if the Raichu wants to use Thunderbolt and in the first attempt that's exactly what happens after I breeze past his first two Pokemon. The second attempt, I get the win condition needed and that is the Raichu using Thundershock. I did get paralyzed earlier in the fight so I could have easily lost this one too but I guess Lieutenant Surge wanted to use an X speed to show me who's boss and I take out the Raichu the next turn. Now here's a controversial decision that I made. I have a good lead but Slowpoke has abysmal 151st rank speed and that has already made me lose several battles at this point in the game. I decided to hang back in Vermilion and do some EV training on the Diglets. You probably know but in Pokemon defeating certain Pokemon will give you hidden stat experiences depending on what it is and then when you eventually level up it'll be added to your other stats. Diglett Cave just so happens to be the gold mine for speed stat experience. So I spent a bit of time in here. I used the rest 
rest of my PP to try to bolster up my speed to make the rest of the run a little bit smoother. I'm not sure if this was a time loss, but I'll let you decide that at the end of the video. Either way, I got some much needed speed that should pay dividends on some of the later fights in the game. Skipping past an unimportant rock tunnel, let's pick back up in Celadon. The first order of business is picking up our strongest offensive moves in Ice Beam and Psychic. Fresh water to the little girl gets me the former, Mr. Psychic gets me the latter. This leads us to an uneventful rocket hideout, which is basically a sprint towards Giovanni number one, which is our next checkpoint, which Slowpoke makes it to at one hour and 58 minutes. From Lieutenant Surge to this point is how far Slowpoke got before passing the same time that Clefairy was able to slowly get past Brock. Before we cut back, let's take a look at the battle first. I don't need to tell anyone how much damage Bubble Beam does on Onyx and Rhyhorn. It tears them new holes that they didn't want, but in the first attempt I actually lose. This is because I'm just being dumb and greedy. I don't go for straight psychics and I try out Ice Beam for some reason and it just lives long enough to do some heavy damage and takes me out. The second attempt I do learn from my mistakes. I go for straight psychics on the Kangaskhan and that's all you need to do. And even if it didn't use one of the most god awful moves in the game in Rage, I still would have made it past this one. So what about Clefairy? This little moon boy is all the way back at Brock and has a lot of ground to make up. I do minimum battles in Mount Moon and I pick up Water Gun for some coverage before getting to Cerulean. I reach rival number 2 at 1 hour and 41 minutes and the first attempt is rather annoying. Sand attack spam leads to frustration and the funny thing is that I can't remember the last couple of months of videos having trouble on rival number 2 but both Pokemon that I'm doing today did. So what's the solution to this? Well, put that bitch to sleep is the solution. You can't throw sand at people when you're taking a nap and that allows us to easily get through this fight. I do the bare minimum afterwards and we reach Misty at 1 hour and 57 minutes. We're still a full hour behind Slowpoke. The bad thing about this fight is that Clefairy doesn't have a strong move like Headbutt and doesn't have the water typing for her to only use Tackle. The strategy here, just for, like for rival number 2, is to utilize Sing and get the two stars a little nappy nap and slap them around a little bit. It works on the first attempt and now we're moving on. Down at the SSN I pick up Body Slam and I get that rare candy before heading to rival number 3 at 2 hours and 9 minutes. And for now the extra levels and the fact that Body Slam gets stabbed means that Clefairy is a good bit stronger than Slowpoke was at this point. Body Slam can't one hit the Pidgeotto but it comes close and then after that I just melt through the rest of his team. It's an easy fight without forcing extra attempts and that's always a good thing. After seeing the SSN off it's time for the third gym. I make it to Surge at 2 hours and 13 minutes and thankfully Clefairy doesn't have a weakness to electric attacks. The first two Pokemon fold to the overpowered stab body slam and the only question is Raichu. Well Clefairy tanks some damage quite well but for some insurance I go for a sing but the Raichu's not having it. It wakes up but thankfully it goes for just a growl. It turns out to be a decent call because I fail to finish it off with our gimped physical damage but Clefairy then surprisingly tanks a Thundershock at the end and we hang on to deliver the finishing blow. This is honestly a pretty good battle. I enjoyed it. And the key thing here that really separates Clefairy from Slowpoke is that Clefairy has access to Thunderbolt which in my opinion is a top 2 or 3 damaging move in the entire game if only for the fact that it trivializes Gyarados in the later parts of the game. From there Rock Tunnel was a breeze so let's pick up back in Celadon like usual. Just like with Slowpoke we can now get Ice Beam from the little girl and then we can go straight to get Psychic and Saffron to give us a very strong moveset before half the game is even done. I'm still at a good level so minimum battles are all that's needed during the Rocket Hideout segment and that leads us to saving at Giovanni number 1 at 2 hours and 41 minutes. We are gaining a little time, slowly but surely. Clefairy has access to Bubble Beam here as well and it's not even worth mentioning the demolition of the two rock ground Pokemon and my lesson is learned from the previous fights with Slowpoke and I go straight Psychics and that gets me past Kangaskhan with very minimal trouble. Now from here on out there's going to be some slight variances in the run and that's why you'll notice the first gems on the sidebar specifically say Brock, Misty or whatever and the later ones just say 4th, 5th, and 6th and so on. I tried to keep them in order the best I could but this should be the one mix up in the segment because Clefairy goes ahead and does Erica before rival number 4 and that's listed first. Clefairy made it to Giovanni, beat him, and made it to Erica in a mere 2 minutes of 
Endgame time at 2 hours and 43 minutes. Erica isn't too bad and it's going to be similar for both Pokemon with access to Psychic against her half poison types and Tangela just being a waste of space. This battle isn't too bad and that's why I did it here before I even went back to Lavender Town. So now from here we can take a look at both Pokemon's rival number 4 battle. Clefairy has gained some ground with 2 hours and 47 minutes while Slowpoke still maintains a very strong lead at 2 hours and 1 minute. The battles are overall similar but in Clefairy's fight you can clearly see the coverage that Thunderbolt provides against Pidgeotto and Gyarados but outside of that it's very similar. Body Slam bodies the Kadabra, Growlithe is weak to Bubble Beam and Ivysaur is weak to Psychic. That's really all you need to know. Now moving on back to Slowpoke without Thunderbolt some things change a little bit. Ice Beam on the Pidgeotto is sufficient enough and works just the same as Thunderbolt but Gyarados is where you really feel the effects. It takes more than two Psychics and you can see that our slow speed means that we take significantly more damage. The rest of the fight plays out exactly the same except Ivysaur outspeeds us but thankfully it just goes for a Leech Seed and then Psychic cleans up this battle nice and neat. So back to Clefairy real quick. I make a pivotal mistake here. At level 39 Clefairy gets its badge boosting move in Harden. It's great but the problem here is that I wasn't thinking and I learned it over Body Slam rather than Bubble Beam. Now I did have the foresight to immediately take my previous save and back it up just in case I needed to revert and it's not going to come into play just now but it's worth noting and we'll talk about it later. From there both Pokemon head down to Fuchsia City. I never show Cycling Road but there are three hidden items that I always pick up if you are interested. There's a Rare Candy, a third and final PP in the game, and a Max Elixir along the way. They're all very valuable items and they take little to no time to pick up so I just always do it but I never show it. Back to Slowpoke and it has no trouble getting through Koga's trainers and the jugglers and gets there at 2 hours and 19 minutes of in-game time. Clefairy however does have problems with the jugglers and this is a direct result of accidentally getting rid of body slam earlier. I'm having problems with psychic types when I don't have access to physical moves and you see the implications here. Alakazam is going to eat my lunch. I'm stubborn and for some reason I keep pressing on although at this point I should have reversed to that previous save and redone this segment but I'm stupid and we'll pay for it later. Eventually Clefairy reaches Koga at 3 hours and 7 minutes but keep in mind that it didn't have to skip Erica, so it's not as bad as it seems. So back to Slowpoke, let's get to his attempts and the first Koga adventure does not go great. I'm pre-poisoned and Muck takes me down really low, I'm not healthy enough to get past the wheezing and it's just a done deal. The second attempt is just a simple matter of same shit different day. Now finally on the third attempt. I'm able to not miss 100 attacks on the muck and I make it to the wheezing, I'm healthy enough to get through it. And this is a perfect example of how Slowpoke's awful speed can make even positive situations way harder than they have to be, but overall 3 attempts isn't the worst thing in the world and I can't really complain too much. Now we're back to Clefairy and you can see how it's starting to come into its own in this fight. Outside of the body slam mishap, it's very 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 strong at this stage in the game. It easily gets past this fight and outspeeds all the Pokemon and this is with out utilizing the badge boost glitch as well so it's just only going to get stronger it's a really easy fight now after that both pokemon pick up their final hms and now there's another slight deviation in the runs once again slowpoke will actually use surf in its moveset so that allows me to take a very brisk swim down to cinnabar and there's not going to be any tombstoner voice in this video i'm sorry have mercy on me editing these two together has taken a long time i don't know how scott's thoughts does it i do battle all of the trainers inside of blaine's gym because they're just easy Easy experience. Now it's time for the Blaine fight. Slowpoke reaches this fight at 2 hours and 43 minutes and you can see the gap shrinking just a little bit. And this fight is self-explanatory. It's water against fire. You know what it is. The important part is that Slowpoke learned amnesia a couple of levels ago and I'll briefly sing its praises. A two-stage special buff that triggers the badge boost needs no further explanation. It's extremely strong and makes an excellent moveset even stronger. Now both runs sync up at Silphco. I do several extra battles, especially on Slowpoke, and let's pick up at rival number 5. I save once, I use a potion, and then I just save again for some reason, but we'll go with 3 hours and 1 minutes going into this fight. And Slowpoke is going to swiftly start excelling in the final 10 or so fights of the game. I start off simple, Ice Beam for the Pidgeot, but you can see that it outspeeds me. I get a lucky freeze proc, and that's that. Afterwards I don't have a great answer for Gyarados, but Amnesia boosts my power levels to the point to where it just doesn't matter. The Alakazam is worrisome, but two additional Amnesias pump our special out of the stratosphere 
and we get past it. Venusaur could be a problem, but you see how little a Vine Whip does, and if it doesn't go for Razor Leaf, it's not a good matchup for Venusaur despite the type advantage that it has. So overall, Slowpoke handles this fight fairly easy. Now over to Clefairy. I'm not going to show the footage, but I did try this in our current state and it just wasn't happening. I make it to rival number 5 at 3 hours and 20 minutes eventually, but that's the time after I redid the last few segments of the game off camera so that I could go back to that previous save and keep Body Slam. Simply put, Clefairy without Body Slam isn't great and Alakazam absolutely walled us, so I just had to redo that entire segment that we talked about earlier. I had to redo it. With that said, our first attempt, you'd think it went great, but you'd be wrong. Thunderbolt is great for Pidgeot and Gyarados, but it manages to deal some pretty significant damage to us. At that point, I desperately go for Hardens for the badge boost, and while it's great for the speed aspect, remember that the special boost comes from Blaine, and we haven't done that yet. Ultimately, I fall short on the initial attempt, and that brings us to our second attempt. I know I level up in this fight, I make use of the badge boost just a little bit on the Pidgeot so that I can outspeed the Gyarados. It allows me to avoid really heavy damage like the first attempt, I level up after the Gyarados, but now I have to use some defense curls on the Growlithe to ensure that I outspeed the Alakazam, and it works, and this time a boosted Body Slam can one hit it. Last up is Venusaur, and I go for Body Slam here rather than the super effective Psychic, and I can only think that it was because I didn't have the special badge boost from Blaine and Body Slam gets stabbed from us being a normal type, so it'd have been a two hit either way. That sounds about right. Either way, outside of the earlier blunder of replacing Body Slam and having to redo some segments of the game, this fight wasn't too bad. Next up is the second Giovanni, and you might notice its absence on the timing chart, and that's because it happens so soon after rival number five, and there's no point, because if you can beat that fight, this one is almost always a complete joke. I've been running the Clefairy Tempt in the background, and you can see that we didn't even need the badge boost, and Slowpoke dominated this fight even harder, so we're moving on. Now both runs stay synced, and we move on to Sabrina next. We'll stick with Clefairy, and it reaches the fight at 3 hours and 28 minutes. And I'd like to emphasize once again that not having Body Slam in this fight would have made it nearly impossible as well. You really need that physical damage to deal with the likes of Alakazam since they are all very tanky towards special damage. I don't really do anything extra or special in this fight, it's just straight Body Slam and that's all that's required. Slowpoke gets here at 3 hours and 8 minutes, and you can see the initial gap between the two Pokemon has closed significantly since the Brock time. And at first glance, it looks like this fight isn't going to go very well. I only have special attacks, and I take pretty significant damage to start out the fight. I get consistently chipped down, and I'm in the red health by the time I make it to the Alakazam, but Generation 1 is a very funny game. It's another case of quote unquote good AI, which means that Alakazam is just going to spam recover. All you have to do is spend 3 Amnesias, and I kept spamming Psychic in this case hoping for the special drop to outpace it more efficiently, but I get it done rather easy. Now the runs go to different places once again. It's time for Clefairy to go down to the home of the Tombstoner, and just like with Slowpoke, I do battle the extra trainers for experience, and I reach Blaine at 3 hours and 45 minutes, and let's see how this fight goes without any super effective moves at our disposal. I start off the fight by just going straight for damage on the first two pre-evolved Pokemon, and when I make it to Rapidash, that was the moment I chose to set up some defense curls. I took a decent chunk of damage, but by the time I was done setting up, the badge boost was strong enough to get me past the Arcanine and claim the 7th badge on our first attempt. Now flipping back to Slowpoke, it's time for Erica, and I could have potentially done this earlier, but I'm slow, and Razor Leaf will still kill me, it will kill generations of Slowpokes at this point. Now with that said, I'm way over leveled for this fight, and there's not even any use for in-depth commentary, two psychics and an ice beam are all that's needed, and this formality of a fight is done, and both Pokemon have their 7th badges down. Clefairy is first up for the final badge, and after doing only the minimum battle, I reached Giovanni at 3 hours and 53 minutes of in-game time. As for the fight itself, it's nothing too special. I get through it on the first attempt, and most Pokemon do take a couple of hits to go down. I take a lot of damage, and I get poison, so it wasn't exactly the most dominant display, but it doesn't really have to be. A win is all that matters, and we get it done. Slowpoke is a slightly different story. I'm lacking in levels, and I do fight all the trainers in the gym to make sure I don't have to grind extra later. Eventually that leads us to the Giovanni fight at 3 hours and 23 minutes, and it's looking like Clefairy will not be able to catch us at this time. With that said, Slowpoke doesn't mess around in this fight. I set up Amnesia into a full onslaught of super effective attacks, and that just utterly destroys this fight in a much more efficient way than Clefairy did. And that takes us to the rival number 6 fight, and honestly this should have been a timestamp, but I'm too deep in at this point to change the graphic, and we'll be sticking with Slowpoke, let's see how it goes, and usually it's a good battle 
battle to test to see if you're ready for the rest of the game. The first attempt is looking great, but a Razor Leaf puts an immediate halt to that. And I can't get enough of Razor Leaf, and I request a second and third helping of it all over my face. It's just so delicious. I love it. So that leads us to the fourth attempt, just to be a completionist about it. I have the decent tools for this fight. The Pidgeot is weak to Ice Beam. Rhyhorn is weak to Surf, as is the Growlithe. I don't have a fantastic answer for Gyarados, but Psychic can get the job done and we resist Alakazam's heaviest attacks. It's really just a Venusaur roulette with Razor Leaf that you have to worry about and it just so happens that this time we get a Vine Whip and we close it out with one Psychic. Overall it's not bad, but it's exactly what you would expect when you're weak to Razor Leaf. Clefairy on the other hand actually has a great time in this fight. I'm not 100% when I level up initially so I hold off on using the full complement of defense curls. Eventually I do set up some against the Gyarados which isn't exactly the safest thing in the world so I take some damage but after that after powering up I'm able to sweep past the rest of this fight without much effort and Clefairy gets this one down on the first attempt and that's pretty great for it. Before the final stretch only Slowpoke takes a few minutes to go back to Celadon to buy some vitamins to bolster up its stats before the final battles and I opt to keep going on Clefairy since it needs to make up as much time as it can at this point. Both Pokemon have uneventful victory road runs and I don't battle all all of the trainers except maybe some here and there for both Pokemon and they're both looking pretty strong we have great move sets let's see how it goes Clefairy reaches the door of the elite four at four hours and ten minutes while Slowpoke reaches it at three hours and fifty minutes now barring the fastest run in history by Clefairy Slowpoke looks like it's gonna have this one wrapped up so we're gonna start off with Clefairy first like most of the times I do the Elite Four, I do go in before I use any of my rare candies just to gauge how it goes. At level 54, the Dugong isn't necessarily hard, and I'm just gauging this fight as of now, but this one goes back and forth and back and forth entirely too long. It's a slog, and eventually I knock it down, but not before getting taken down into the yellow before going into Cloister. Now thankfully with Thunderbolt, this is a two shot and it's not that bad. I do get confused, but it's not a factor in this matchup, I do take it out. Slowbro's up next, and I always deem this section of the Lorelei fight that you can just set up of your own volition. You don't even have to worry about anything, and I do just that. I set up some defense curls for the badge boost, and eventually Thunderbolt takes it out. I don't take any damage. Next up is Jinx, and it does take several body slams to finally get this one down. Now, I know I could easily just look back at the footage, but I'm a little bit lazy right now, and I can only assume that I took a couple of growls earlier in the fight, so we'll just go with that. Last up is Lapras, and Thunderbolt does the trick just fine. I do take a scary blizzard, but with a badge boost to our special, I survive with barely any HP, and it's honestly a great feeling to make it through the initial dive of the Elite Four before I even use my candies, so we'll just keep it going. Next up is Bruno, and I'm not going to trash talk too much here, but we have a great moveset, we have the badge boost and defense curl, and everything we need to deal with this one. It's not really worth lingering on too much in a video that I'm covering two Pokemon, this one's over, let's just skip ahead. And since I'm doing so well in our very first attempt, I figured now is the time to use some candies going into Agatha. I get up to level 66, and I'm hoping that this is enough to outspeed some of these spooky boys. It's not but it's okay. Psychic is not one hitting, but back to back Dream Eaters means that I do get past the first Gengar. I have to try to set up on the Golbat here, but it uses Haze. Haze just exists. It's one of the most annoying moves in the entire game. I do get off some curls after that to just try to try to recoup some of my losses, but not as many as I would like. Thunderbolt eventually does finish it off. Next up is the Haunter, and annoyingly enough, Psychic is not enough since the Haze hit us earlier, but it's not a big deal as a retroactive super potion means that it may as well have been a one shot. Arbok is the weak link of Akita's team, and it goes down in just a couple of moves. The screeches that it does get off is inconsequential considering that Gengar won't even take advantage of that. But speaking of Gengar, I'm out of Psychic PP because I forgot to use an elixir here and that just puts me in a really tough spot. I have to utilize Thunderbolt and it looks like it'll take 3 hits but it uses Toxic into a Dream Eater and that means that Thunderbolt is enough and I'll also take this fight on my first attempt and Clefairy is performing masterfully on the Elite Four. 3 trainers down and 3 tries. That's really good. Now it's time for Lance and finally Body Slam has ran its course. I need Ice Beam at this point for fairly obvious reasons. Now the fight starts off alright, Gyarados outspeeds me though, and it gets off some minor damage, and then a Thunderbolt takes us on. Now I know that I need to outspeed the Aerodactyl if I want to keep this streak alive, so I set up some defense curls here for the badge boost for what I think might be enough speed. I take some damage in return, 
but I'm able to use a couple of ice beams to get past the two Dragonairs with no issues at all after the setup. Unfortunately, I didn't calculate this right and Aerodactyl still outspeeds us. It gets off a Supersonic, which has a 25% chance to miss, but it doesn't. And then I hit myself in confusion because of course I do. There's a 50% chance of that happening by the way, which leads to a Hyper Beam that forces a reset. But all is well, we'll make it back to Lance immediately with the power of video editing. Now for the second attempt for Lance, and hopefully we learn our lesson. This time, I magically outspeed the Gyarados despite being the same level, I guess it was a speed tie the first time, and a Thunderbolt takes it out. And since we took no damage from the Gyarados this time, I have full reign to fully set up all six defense curls to ensure that I outspeed the flying rock bird. But notice how little damage Hyper Beam does from the Dragonair with my defense boosted up. It's very satisfying. I take out the two Dragonairs with Ice Beams just like before. Now with maximum defense set up, I outspeed and I one hit the Aerodactyl. And I'd like to sincerely say, go fuck yourself Aerodactyl. I hope you're watching this and you hear that. Last up is Dragonite and we know what Ice Beam's gonna do. It's a massacre. So much so that it's probably gonna get this video demonetized. Last up is the Champion Fight and this one is going fantastic. I set up on the Pidgeot. It's very easy because it solely has physical moves and the rest of the fight's not hard. Now, I am gonna skip ahead to the Venusaur and in my head I'm feeling that this is in the bag but the problem is that I just leveled up and it eliminated our badge boost. It goes for Razor Leaf but since this isn't a water type, you get to see a rare instance of a Pokemon that actually survives one and it's just over, right? No, Psychic doesn't one-shot it and it goes for Mega Drain, which in my mind, for my money, is the weakest special move in the entire game that does pathetic damage unless it critically hits like it does here and it takes me down with a big chunk of damage. I'm humiliated by this death and my eyes are rolling all the way in the back of my head when this happened. Now let's go to the second attempt. Just like last time, the Pidgeot is the time to set up your badge boost, but I don't do many. I think I do one since I have the knowledge that I'll level up and lose it all if I can do it all right now. Eventually an Ice Beam moves us on, and after this I move on to the Alakazam, and without Body Slam you'd think that this one would be bad, but the damage isn't awful, and Alakazam has a tendency to waste a turn on Reflect, and that's exactly what it does. I take a Side Beam first for negligible damage, and some Thunderbolts are enough to get us through. Rhydon is weak to Ice Beam, and it doesn't struggle with the sweet release of death, it just accepts its fate. Gyarados is severely weak to Thunderbolt, and it follows suit as well. Arcanine is next to last, and while I don't have a super effective answer, Psychic is just a solid neutral damage move, and two of them are enough to move us on. Last up is Venusaur, and look how pathetic Mega Drain is normally. This is a Mega Drain, this is what killed me last time. I'm honestly shocked it did so much that time. Anyway, I set up some defense curls here since I just leveled up. It goes for a growth which raises a special that's not great. And a psychic chunks it down, but it looks like it's not going to be a two hit KO. But I hit some godlike luck and I get the 33% special drop chance. Now it charges up a solar beam, but everyone knows that it's never going to get the chance to get this attack off as another psychic seals the deal. Clefairy's run is over and I'll keep the final stats hidden for now and we'll reveal them together at the end. But I will say that Clefairy did excellent. It only took a total of two resets to get past this, and the times that I failed, it was pretty much just my fault. I'm still pissed off about the Mega Drain to this day, so if you're watching this years into the future, just know that I'm still mad about that Mega Drain doing so much damage to me. But enough stalling, let's see Slowpoke's run, see if he can keep up with Clefairy. So just like with Clefairy, I go into Lorelei, fresh, no candies, just to see how it's going to go. On the Dugong, I don't play any games, I fully set up Amnesia, and then I nuke it down with a Psychic and then we move on. And now that I'm fully set up, Psychic can one hit the Cloister and also move us on without any hassle whatsoever. Slowbro is next, and while we don't have anything that isn't resisted, Psychic will still do heavy damage with our Amnesia buffs, and I take it out in the next turn with a Surf, and that's three down very quickly. Jinx is next, and Surf is enough to bring it down with a single shot. Last up is Lapras, and although I level up and lose the badge boost, the good thing about Amnesia is that I retain my six stages of special boost and a Psychic is enough to take it out in a single hit. It's another easy one and done fight in this video. But next up is Bruno. And I'm just gonna quickly fast forward through the footage. Honestly, I'm just, I'm tired of Bruno. How many times can you say someone is bad and continually just back it up like we do? Why is he in the Elite Four? I demand a written letter from Game Freak addressed to me. Gym Leader Matt, uh, they need to explain to me why he is included in the Elite Four when that's supposed to be the 
the culmination of the best trainers in the game. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't to anybody. No one believes Bruno should be in this. I also used Rare Candies right here before Agatha since the first two fights were really easy and I want to give myself the best shot that I can here since I have like 11 of them. I begin the fight at level 67 and obviously I'm not going to outspeed here. It's Slowpoke. I take a Nightshade, which is unfortunate. It's not the best situation and Psychic isn't quite enough to knock it out. I do trigger a retroactive super potion and I make a mistake here of going for surf. I don't know why I did it. It puts us back in the same exact position because it fails to knock it out. Luckily that triggers a second retroactive super potion but I'm a complete idiot and I just went for surf again. Now at this point I'm thinking that this just isn't my fight we're about to have to reset. It goes for a wasted dream eater and I do finish it off. It's not a pretty start. Then the gold back comes out and I'm going for amnesia. I'm confused. I hurt myself. Eventually it goes for haze and then I try to get off another one but I start taking a lot of damage in the process before I eventually go for an ice beam to take it out. Now next up is the Haunter and I finally catch a break. It goes for a confused ray while I'm already confused and in the next turn I break out of the previous confusion and I finish it off with a psychic. I'm thinking maybe there's a chance here now. Then the Arbok comes out. It outspeeds me. It goes for screech and then I take it out with a psychic. That's about the best you could hope for. Now the final Gengar starts out with a Confuse Ray, but I avoid hitting myself and to my surprise, a Psychic is actually enough to one hit it. Despite all the mishaps and bad luck, I actually make it through this fight in one shot and that's very nice. Next up is Lance, and remember we don't have a solid Gyarados answer, so I'm interested to see how this one plays out. And I go for some amnesia setups, but I take two hyper beams to the face, but it doesn't do as much as you might think. Slowpoke is relatively bulky, amnesias make us even bulkier. I live at about half health, and now that I'm boosted, a psychic can take it out in one hit. Now the next two Dragonairs are subsequently one hit by an ice beam. I outspeed one, but not the other, so go figure, I guess it was a speed tie, maybe once faster I don't know next up is Aerodactyl it's gonna outspeed us no doubt about that it goes for a bite and it crits at this point I'm getting worryingly low but a surf does take it out and we move on to the Dragonite I have access to Ice Beam, we know what it's going to do, but the question here is if I can get it off at this health level. It goes for a Hyper Beam, but I get some luck and it manages to miss. And you know what Ice Beam's going to do at this point. That's four battles with four victories at this point. Let's hold our breath, let's see what happens with the champion fight. I'm not going to jinx Slowpoke but we're going for history here. I want to set up on the Pidgeot, but a Sky Attack critical hit does an absurd amount of damage right out the gate. 155 damage straight to the dome, it has me immediately worried. A Wing Attack further chips me down, and then we do a follow up Ice Beam to move us onto the fight. Now Alakazam is up next. I go for Surf and my special boost makes Surf able to one hit it before any more damage can be done. Next up is Rhydon. It's slower and it's double weak to Surf so you know what the outcome's gonna be here. Up next is Gyarados and it's pivotal to the success of this fight to one hit it so I let a Psychic rip and that's exactly what happens. Arcanine is the appetizer before the main course and being weak to Surf just means that it's all but a formality at this point as it goes down to another one shot move. Now it's time for Venusaur. Our last run, it left us with multiple Razor Leaf resets, but to my surprise, I actually outspeed it, and with our boosted special, a Psychic is enough to one hit it, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, Slowpoke, out of all the runs I've done on this channel, is the one Pokemon that's ever defeated the Elite Four on the very first attempt with no resets. Now I'd have to fact check myself, I don't think I'm going to do that right now, I probably should, but I feel like that's the case, and it was overall just a wondrous run. Uh, there were awful starts in some of these fights, but let's just be honest, Amnesia is absurdly powerful and with a moveset that contains good coverage along with a stab psychic, you can do some great things and we see that on display for this Elite Four run. So let's stop stalling and let's take a look at Slowpoke's final stats here. We finished with a level of 71 and one of the best pre-evolved times I've ever had at 4 hours and 7 minutes. That actually puts it at number 2 in terms of time and that's incredible. But before I gush about that, let's flip it back over. Clefairy finishes with a level of 71 and it brought back that awful Brock start with an extremely respectable 4 hour and 28 minute time. I think I did about as optimally as I could with Clefairy. The Brock time was rough but there's nothing you can really do about that. It was nothing but business from that point on and I felt that I did about as well as I really could. Now for Slowpoke, I do wonder if I could have saved some time 
I did do that extra grinding in the Diglett Tunnel, but I think the speed might have actually saved us time. I'm not sure how to really calculate that. I also went back for some vitamins at the end of the game, so I think I could have maybe saved 10 minutes or so, but I'm not too caught up on it. Yeah, I'm happy with what I've done here today. So if we take a look at the new and improved updated tier list, you can see that Slowpoke has gained the most. It's moved all the way up the list to number two. Now while it's seven or eight levels higher than the next two, the Bell Sprout and the Tentacool, it's really hard for me to ignore a 30 minute gap that it's improved over those Pokemon. And I think that I value that way more on my personal tier list over the levels. Let me know what you think about that, but 4 hours and 7 minutes is just really impressive to me. And knowing that I might have been able to get a sub 4 hour time if I was a little bit more optimal on some things was something I didn't think was possible outside of Ghastly. Now Clefairy also has a significant bump in its tier as well. The yellow segment of my tier list is what I would be about B tier I guess. And it's going to sit at the top of that category. It seems to fit. It was faster than both Krabby and Charmander by a pretty decent amount and the levels are roughly equal but I can't put it up there with the Tentacle and Bellsprout since they did relatively about the same time at a much lower level. So again, let me know what you think. At the end of the day it's just my fun little personal tier list but I do value any input you want to give to it. Overall, I had fun doing this video, but it was a lot of work. I'm not sure if I'm happy with the format, I think I could have done some things better. But I think it's sufficient and I'm glad to get a redo of my old runs out of the way. If you are curious, I don't plan on redoing the Cubon video because I truly believe that it's just that bad. But I do have some ideas about maybe another Cubon run that might manifest itself in a future video. We'll see. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't really have any plans for next week. Uh, it's nearing the final weeks of the year, so I'm not even sure if I'll have time to get another video out every week. And I'm still dealing with a very bootleg setup over here since my mixer shorted out several weeks ago I still haven't got it fixed. I've had some suggestions for Nidoking, King and that does sound interesting to me so maybe I'll do that. I'm also interested in Execute. Uh, someone suggested Executor and that my mind immediately went to ex Execute and I was like well maybe I'll do that since it's psychic type. You know it just seems interesting to me. Outside of that I would still like to do Mewtwo and Mew one day just for completion's sake. I think they can top the tier list and I'd like to see that happen. But before I start rambling too much I think that's going to be about it for me. If something happens and you don't see a video from me for a week or two things are more than likely just really busy but feel free to suggest things and as always I'll reply with my thoughts when I get the chance. As usual, I appreciate anyone that takes the time out of their day to watch my videos and it feels good to share a pretty fun little hobby with you guys but I think that's going to wrap it up for me. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye!